Welcome to the Disciple Making Leaders podcast. I am Mike Keaton, your host, and I am once again having the privilege today to be joined with Ken Adams, uh, lead pastor of Crossroads Church and founder of Impact Ministries. And um, can we continue our conversations today uh, on disciple making and in particular mm -hmm. developing disciple making leaders? And so where we've been over these last few episodes is just understanding uh, that we got to have the right kind of leaders mm. uh, to get the right kind of results. And if we want disciple making movements, then we've got to have a good process of developing disciple making leaders. Yeah. So uh, give us a quick snapshot of where we've been and mm. then we'll launch into where we're going. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, the reason that we uh, that we do these podcasts is to really share uh, with other leaders. Some f several folks follow our podcast, and so uh, we we are really committed to helping people uh, learn what it means to be uh, disciple making churches. And in order to have disciple making churches, you got to have. Uh, you got to have a disciple making target, a strategy. You got to have environments, but then you got to have leaders. And so, uh, leaders are not uh, are not born; they're made. Right. So Jesus, uh, you know, ended up, you know, appointing leaders because he had made disciples. And so, same process works today. It really does. We don't need to uh, go out and, and and create something new, reinvent something. We we just need to do what Jesus did. And so, uh, when you look at <clears throat> Uh, the Old Testament um, definition of a leader, uh, that's Jeremiah 3.15. Uh, I will give you shepherds after my own heart, uh, God says, that will lead you with knowledge and understanding. And so then when you fast forward the tape to Jesus, Jesus is the, the, the flesh and blood example uh, model, if you will, of a Jeremiah 315 leader. And therefore, he is the model that we need for leadership in our own churches. And so, you know, uh, Jesus uh, clearly was driven by the right heart. Uh, he wanted to see every person in every nation and every generation be a disciple and build disciples. We know that because that's what those were uh, really the, the two foundational statements that Jesus made. Uh, in Matthew chapter 22, he gave us the great commandment. Matthew chapter 28, he gave us the great commission. Right. So those two um, two passages really frame up for us what uh, the mission of the church is and what the mission of every leader really ought to be, man. Mm -hmm. We ought to just be, in fact, I heard it said like this, Mike, a great leader is a, a leader with a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission. That is great. And it's so, I mean, that really says it all, right? Yeah. And so, uh, so once we get the right heart, then we've got to have the right knowledge. Right. And so what we mean by that is, is it really, that's referring to the priorities of leadership. And so there were some things that Jesus knew that he wanted his disciples to know as development for leadership. Mm -hmm. So... Um, as you walk back and you look through the Gospels and you look at what Jesus did, there really are three very s specific things that Jesus wanted them to know in order to be able to fulfill what he called them to, to do. And so the first thing we see is that Jesus just wanted them to know how to live the life that he lived. He just wanted them to know how to live like he wanted every disciple on the planet to live. Yeah. And so it, it really is very, very simple. I think Jesus made it simple for a reason. He wanted them to live the way he lived, and he demonstrated that through his character and through his conduct. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do, Mike, is that we want to try to help every leader <clears throat> understand what it means to, before they help anybody do anything, before they influence anybody to do anything, we want them to just know what it means to know, knowledge, what it means to live the life that Christ lived. And, and so, yeah, so live the life. So he was the model for that. Mm -hmm. And he wanted them to see the character and conduct. So exactly. So you know, just kind of speak a little bit real quickly about the character. Yeah. yeah, give us a little bit of what that looks like in each category, character yeah. and conduct. Yeah, so the best uh, the best 
concise definition or description of the character of Christ. It's Galatians chapter 5, fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul says, you know, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So, you know, you could probably say uh, there's probably some other words, some other adjectives that describe the the uh, the character of Christ. But that's a good that's a good starting it place. Is. And so, imagine this, Mike. Imagine a church filled with leaders that are all demonstrating the fruit of God's Spirit. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. Not the kind of not that's, that's, that's not what I've seen happen in a lot of churches that I've been a part mm -hmm. of, and so we want to see a church filled with leaders that are being uh, that are displaying and demonstrating the fruit of the spirit. We also want to see uh, a whole church filled with leaders that are demonstrating and displaying the conduct of Christ. The conduct of Christ really is uh, fleshed out in the Gospels. We see. It, it actually is a demonstration of the great commandment and the great commission in our lives. It's uh, uh, being right related to our Father, being right related to ourselves, being right related to other people. And so we see that. We've actually been able to demonstrate that or actually been able to see that displayed in, in the New Testament church. In Acts chapter 2, we see really seven marks of a disciple. So here at our church, we call that an M7 disciple. And so, right. uh, so if you have... The fruit of the Spirit, and if you are a fully trained M7 disciple, then you are living the life that Christ wanted us to live. Right. So you said three things. Live the life. they got to yeah. know three things. Live the life the first one. Right. What's the second one? So the second one is they not only got to need to live the life, they need to lead others to live the life. Right. So think about this. If Jesus had not started a movement, if Jesus had not done anything, he lived the life of a disciple. But he did do something else. He led a handful of people to live like he lived. And he did that strategically and intentionally. So he took what the Bible describes as untrained ordinary mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. unschooled ordinary men, and he literally led them to become world changers. Right. Acts chapter 17, they said, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Mm. Now, how do you go, how do you go <laughs> from an unschooled ordinary man to being called uh, a man who is turning the world upside down? That doesn't happen by accident. No, man. he didn't just wing that. He did not wing that. That was very strategic. Yes. That was very calculated. And so, so he did not just live the life, he led others to live the life. Mm. And he did that really through a very strategic, intentional process, basically of helping people move from being a part of the culture to being called leaders. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've unpacked that we on other podcasts, podcasts right? so we won't go through all the details. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you, gotta, you need to know, again, knowledge, know how to live the life, know how to lead others, to live the life. And the third one would be? The third step is Jesus wanted his disciples to know uh, how to leverage their influence. Mm. Leveraging your influence is when you know how to raise up leaders of leaders. <clears throat> so let's, let's kind of re, re, revisit for a minute. If all Jesus had done was live the life Christianity wouldn't even moved. Mm -mm. We wouldn't be talking about it today. It'd be a great example for people, but <laughs> exactly. it's about as far as it would have went. Yeah. And and quite honestly, probably nobody would be talking about him today. Correct. And then if he if he had led others and they they had become disciples and that lived like him, but they didn't disciple anybody else, it's a done deal. It's over. Right. You know, it, it comes to a halt. But the reason that we're sitting here talking about it 2,000 years later and thousands of miles from where it happened mm. is because Jesus knew it was not, he knew they needed to know how to leverage their influence. Right. That's this whole idea of leading with knowledge is that there's things that we need to know. We need to know how to live like Jesus lived. We need to know how to lead others to live like Jesus did. And we need to know how to leverage our influence so that we have a whole movement of leaders right. that are, and, and Mike, man, so many people, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't ever 
influence. They, they never leveraged their influence. I could tell you until I really until I came to Crossroads, I can tell you that I could name in my whole Christian experience, my whole walk with the Lord, I could name on one hand the number of leaders, including pastors, who had more than one generation of disciples as a byproduct of their lives. Hmm. And we have we have Christians today that are good, godly people that are walking with God, but they're not reproducing their lives. They're not raising up leaders of leaders. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we, we've got, we, man, we've got to do something about that. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I mean, Jesus just didn't sit around having Bible studies. I mean, he lived the life. He was the model for him. And I, I like the way one time I've heard you say it, that, that Jesus had a mission. Yeah. He was a model. Yeah. He used a method mm. and he started a movement, which is all the same things. I mean, it's it's the heart, it's, it's here's the things you need to know, live the life, lead others, and as you lead others <laughs> through that process, then you're going to naturally have leaders develop. So now what do you got to do? Leverage your influence so yeah. they'll do the exact same thing. It's just this beautiful movement. Yeah, and and back to your point, man. You, you, you said he didn't just sit around doing Bible studies. What he did is he taught people how to lead Bible studies. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's good. And so it goes back to that concept of, you know, which is better, you know, to catch fish for somebody or to teach somebody how to catch fish, fish man. Right. And so here, here's where, we're, where we are really and truly, Mike, where, where the body of Christ is losing it today is that we have, we have a lot of people being educated, but we're being educated way above our level of obedience. Mm. And so we're not doing the very thing Jesus said, like we need to be, and that is making disciples that make more disciples. And so, you know, the fact is, is that uh, in order to accomplish the mission of Great Commandment and Great Commission, we've got to have leaders that know, that have the right knowledge of how to live the life that Jesus lived, how to lead others to live the life, and how to leverage their influence to have leaders leading leaders that are living the life. It all works together. Absolutely. And man, we we need quite honestly, you know, Mike, we 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 we're using a a resource in our church. It's called 315 leadership and uh, we've developed a tool to help people um, to help people train mm -hmm. leaders to be leaders. And so uh, we're using this model of trying to help uh, teach people how to become 315 leaders and then reproduce that through other leaders. And so uh, we, uh, we, we, we are seeing uh, some traction happen with that. And so uh, we really uh, would encourage you to share this podcast with other leaders mm -hmm. that are trying to do the same thing. And that's really what it's going to take to see more churches become disciple-making churches. Absolutely. And so that is what we're here to try to help uh, convey. Uh, and hopefully that uh, the Lord will let uh, you grab hold to as well. It's just this idea of multiplying um, a mm -hmm. movement of disciple-making leaders. And, uh, and so you can find this resource at impactdisciples.com, mm -hmm. uh, amongst a lot of other resources. But this is our 315 leadership training, uh, obviously based on Jeremiah 315. And so we've unpacked uh, what it looks like to have a shepherd after God's heart. Um, and and the, the shepherd that has the right kind of knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we look ahead, we'll be talking about uh, the right understanding that uh, a disciple-making leader needs to have. So thank you, Ken. Thanks, and thank Mike. you for tuning in today and, uh, and watching. And uh, we just are praying and here for you mm -hmm. and help you any way we can. Uh, just reach out to us. And thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next time.